Good morning, everyone. Uh, I've got some more weird and cool MIDI stuff for you here today. If you're a guitar player, you've probably heard of a device called a kill switch. And essentially all this is, is it's a button that is installed in the signal path, the, like the output of the guitar. And when you press it, it just breaks the signal path. And this essentially, you know, mutes the sound. So it's essentially like just like a fancy mute button. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create sort of the reverse of this, the reverse of a, a kill switch, inverted kill switch, I guess, but for your MIDI instruments and software instruments in Logic Pro. So the first thing you need is you need a MIDI controller that has momentary buttons on it of some kind. These can be like regular buttons. These can be pads. What you don't want are buttons that are sort of on off switches where you press it and then you have to press it again to turn it on and off. That That's considered a toggle switch. On my Novation launch key, I have pads here that can be used for note entry, but uh, they can also be used as momentary uh, CC switches. So that's the first thing you need. You need a MIDI controller that either has momentary uh, buttons or switches or has a way to configure them as momentary switches. Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is create a MIDI software instrument and then choose an instrument. You can choose any instrument you want. Just choose a patch that has some sustain to it. If it's a patch that has a quick decay to it, like a keyboard with a, a quick decay to it, it's probably not gonna work out uh, the best here. So I'm just gonna use the old uh, ES2 and I'm gonna use a preset in here under synth bells called warm bells. And on its own, this sounds like this. And uh, it's a little dry. Let's add a little reverb to this just to make it a little more interesting. So what I'm going to do next is I need to set my pads to one of the custom modes where the pads, rather than being assigned to playable notes, they're assigned to CCs as momentary switches. Now on my launch key, if I hold shift and I select pad mode custom three, this gives me a whole row of momentary CC switches. The on value is only sent when you're holding that switch or holding that button. When you release it, it automatically goes back to zero. Whereas this top row, these are on off toggle switches. So you turn them on, they're 127, and you have to tap them again to send a zero message. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the scripter plugin on my MIDI effects, and we're going to select a preset. We're going to select the MIDI to plugin parameters preset. And then before my reverb, I'm going to add the gain plugin. Now, there's different ways you can do this. There's different plugins you can do this with. You could assign, you know, these controls to the volume control or the, the mute button if you really wanted to or the solo button. There's different ways you can make it work, but I think this is the simplest uh, way to make this work. So I'm going to click Learn MIDI Input. I'm going to play that pad. You can see that that is CC36, that button there. And then we're going to assign a target, Learn Plugin Parameter. Then I'll click the Gain knob to learn it. And now what you'll see is when I press that pad, we get a gain of plus 24. When I release, we get negative 96. So it's effectively muted at negative 96. Now we don't want this to be plus 24. So let's take the max value here and set that to 80%. And what that'll do is it'll set the, the gain right to zero when you press the button. If you want to make it easy, you can record in your chords or your notes first separately, and then you can bring in the kill switch and perform that in as a secondary thing. Um, so you can do it either way. Because it's a CC, it's just going to be recorded as CC automation. Let's go ahead and just bypass Scripter and the Gain plugin for now, and let me just play in the idea. And then you just hit record again to overlap 
the MIDI and record in that CC data. And there you go. You can see all these gray lines. If I double click on that, go to my automation and then go down to CC36, you'll see all of those on and offs that have been performed in. Now, another way you could go about this is instead of using the gain plugin, you could use the auto filter. For this, I'll turn off the distortion, LFO, and envelope, and we're gonna learn the cutoff frequency. And so now the cutoff is our switch rather than volume. And you can, again, adjust where in the filter uh, you want the top part of the filter to be, where you want the cutoff frequency to be when you press the button. And so now this is, you know, this is going to give us a little bit of a different sound, but it'll be similar to the kill switch, uh, the inverted kill switch sound. All right, guys, so that's how you can use the Scripter plugin and a momentary on-off uh, CC switch on your MIDI controller to create an inverted kill switch for your MIDI software instruments in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.